Welcome back to the studio. We are going to kind of go A to Z on acrylic pour pendants this time. Um, I've gotten quite a few requests of people asking me, how do you put your, your pendants together? Uh, there's two ways that I personally put my pendants together. There's one that I'm, that's definitely like two steps takes a little longer, but you get a better result in my opinion. And then there's the short, quick way. We're going to do both of those today. First though, I'm going to do a quick pour. I've been wanting to do one with some whites and browns in it, stone-like, maybe a tad bit of this yellow here. And then I'll probably use a, this as my stir stick just to get a little tiny bit of black into it. But these are just colors I mixed up and most of them are Liquitex. Uh, this one's FW inks, gold. So there's a, so there's just kind of a plethora of brownishness going on today. This here actually is one of my favorite colors in the entire world, transparent burnt umber. All right, make that burnt sienna. I always say umber, but it's transparent burnt sienna. And I'm gonna add a few drops, I think, into that one and not really mix it, just drop them in there and see what it does. I wanna get a lot of squirrelies and corners and, and straights in this because, again, this is for pendants. So let's put it together. Yummy! Oh yeah, there's a little bit of Floetrol in the white, but that's it. So that's where that's coming from. Now on to the building the pendant portion of this. What you just saw me pour on was Yupo. And Yupo is basically this. It's a non-porous, non-paper sheet. Acrylics just love Yupo. Um, alcohol inks do really great on Yupo. We'll do some of those in the future too, I think. But there's two ways that I make pendants. One is from the skin itself, after I do a pour like this. So it's just one piece. That was the front side, but I am interested in the back side today on that one. And then there is the pores on the Yupo that I do. This, this one's actually from last week. So you just go and find what you want, trace it, cut it out. There you go. But that's, okay, let's get into the two different methods. One, the first way to do it, which is what I call the all-in-one, is just it's one session and you're done and you just let it dry. What that usually means is you've done it on Yupo and cut out a piece like that. That's on Yupo. Oh, and I wanted to bring this up. This piece of Yupo has been around for quite a while and in the heat of last summer, it bowed just a little bit. It fits in the tray just fine and when you press it down, it fills perfectly, but Yupo is kind of strong. So you're gonna need some weight on this when you go to dry it. Other things you're gonna need, isopropyl alcohol, which I have in a little spray bottle here. Diamond Glaze, this stuff is the best. Um, I've also tried E6000, hated it. Uh, because to me, E6000 is kind of, I don't know, it's between glue and rubber cement. So when it starts to dry, it gets those little 
sticky balls of rubber and yet yeah, for doing this kind of thing when working with glass it was horrible I threw some pendants out because of that but this diamond glaze that's the stuff that's what you want okay so the all-in-one that would be something like this where you you had something on a piece of Yupo you cut it to the size you want it okay we like that pendant we're gonna glue the back and glue the front all at the same time so first and always keep a toothpick handy because it's really easy to get those out with a toothpick. Okay, so on these two, these ones up here, these are already pre-done. And I'm going to show you how we do those two. Okay, so these are on UFO. Oh, actually, this one's on UFO. This was an actual skin that I traced out and cut out. It's a good skin. I'm really, I, I might have to keep this one. I really like it. So we're going to get our diamond glaze. You don't want a whole bunch of this stuff. That was even probably too much. This stuff goes a long way. So you get your trusty toothpick. It's really important that you spread this out pretty good. Take the time to do that. If you're, if you're making this for a friend or for yourself, take the time to really get that glue into all these crevices because it makes for a stronger, better, long-lasting piece. Okay, battery died. We're back. <laughs> Let's try this again. I don't know where it cut off at, so I'm hoping that I don't uh, miss anything, but I'll just do a quick recap of what we did today. I basically had some pieces that I'd already glued like this 24 hours ahead that I cut out and glued into these trays. That's what these, these four are, or these five are. And then these three were pieces that I cut that I basically found a piece that I like, traced it, and then cut it out, and then stuck in there. But what we did here, this we did the quick method on this one, where we put glue on the back, put the UPO piece of paper in, or the skin, and then put more glue on the top, and put the cabochon down. So there's two ways of doing this, the quick way, or the two-day method. The two-day method, again, is my favorite, because there's less mistakes. I've lost some pieces, because being in a hurry, you can't see certain things. Um, this way, when I push it down on the, on the, the uh, skin that I'm using, I can move it around, swish it, pushes all the, the air out so I don't have to really worry about bubbles, but that one's going to be pretty cool when it's done. We're going to cut that one out tomorrow and glue it as well. These ones are the ones that were, the, again, the two-step method or the all-in-one method, and this is the one that was bowing up, so it needs a little weight on it, but these little top bezel pieces stick up higher than this does, so I put my pieces out like this just to get the bezels off to the side. And then we're going to cover them. Actually, I want this guy in here too. There we go. And this guy here. And we're just going to set something on top of it, like, yeah, the alcohol, and set it aside until tomorrow. That little bit of weight helps it seal. Here we are on day two, and we got a good dry on this. Um, I'm finding that my Kindle <laughs> does a decent job of recording these videos, but not great with close detail. So I'll film some close-ups of this or take some pictures of it with my phone, and hopefully you can get a better idea of the detail that's in this. I went back and played some more. And, you know, just took a skewer and made circles and, and things like that. So this side I like a lot. Okay, so I did go over what I recorded yesterday, and it got just about everything, but there was one really important part it didn't get, and that was me actually putting the cabochon and the tray and everything together, and then a really important point about rubbing alcohol and how you keep it clean. So we'll do that now with the ones that I set up yesterday. These have been drying since last night. Okay, so this is the one we glued yesterday. You didn't get to see it. Um, but I put a blot of glue down on that, pushed it down with my thumb, 
moved it around a little bit to kind of get it to where I wanted it to be, made sure all the air bubbles were out of it and let it dry like that. Then I, well, before it dried though, uh, once I kind of got it set where I wanted, I wiped the edges off here just to make it easier to get at with the scissors. I'm gonna talk more about the alcohol here in a minute and how that works. I'm seeing some smudging from my angle on top of this one with glue on it. So I'll talk about that as well. There's one there too, because you can get that off. That's what the isopropyl alcohol is for. I use my little, I have a little spray bottle, spray it on a napkin and go all over it. So we're gonna do the put together first, just so you can see how easy it is. Okay, so getting back to this piece, when I initially glued it yesterday and pressed it down, of course it had a layer of glue around the edge. I like to get rid of that. It's not a big deal, I just like to get rid of it because it makes it easier, it gets, you can get closer in with the scissors and get more detail cut out of it rather than these chunks of, of glue. This glue dries really great. It dries a lot like school glue, but harder. So I'm gonna spray my, do that. So if I didn't, Q-tips are what I normally use, but as I said before, I didn't go to the store and get Q-tips this week. So I would just wipe around like this. The important part is once you've wiped an area of wet glue and you go to a new area and you're wiping it off the glass, move your paper towel because you're gonna put glue back on it. If you get what I mean there, you want a cleaner piece and then go and find another clean piece and do it that way or else you're just gonna be putting glue back on it which you're gonna do anyway to a certain extent and so the next day all you have to do where's that one that had glue on it there it is I'm even I'll try to I don't know if you can see the fact that there's glue on there but a little piece left there it is glass so my fingernail is not gonna scratch this but if I used a piece of metal or something it would definitely scratch it so beware of that as well so I just loosened up what was left. Yep, all the glue's gone. So that's how you do that. And you're all done and set. So this guy here, because this is dry, I'm gonna get in here and cut it at a little bit of an angle. Try to be careful of this part here because I want to use this for another. I really like that stream right there. So we're gonna be very careful to preserve that little piece. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be perfect. Okay. There's that guy I like right there. Okay, you can get these little bumps, little poke outs, just trim them, go through. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. Once this is glued into the tray, you're not going to see any of this. As long as it fits in there, you're fine. Oh, yeah, I need a tray for that. Okay, before we even get any glue out, we're gonna test the fit. You want it to fit in there and slightly wiggle or move, but you want it to be down in there. If it's sitting up on one edge, you wanna really check around the edge, make sure it's all, the whole thing is flush. Oh, it likes that spot because it doesn't wanna move. I actually kinda like it too, but it has to come back out so I can glue it. Glue all over my fingers. That's a pretty one. That just meant that there's some pieces on the edge because this is straight skin, which means it's acrylic and it's a little more rubbery. So it tended to grab, which is fine. I want it to be like that, but it's on the edge here. All right, so it determined itself which way it wanted to go and it was very uh, adamant about it. So I think we'll just follow that. So the part that you didn't get to see all the way through was the gluing and all of that. Okay. Best stuff in the world, again. I'm gonna put a little bloop in there. Not a lot, about a little pearl size there. And then get your spreading tool, whether, you know, if it's the back, you can use a Q-tip because if you get little strands in there, it's not gonna matter, it's not gonna show unless you're a complete, you know, perfectionist, then you could use this. Um, Q-tips, a little brush that you clean off right after because that, that little brush, uh, I did use one yesterday. That part got cut out so you didn't see it, so I'm referring to something you didn't even see. <laughs> I'll put a little bit more glue in there. But yeah, this stuff does go a long way. 
but yeah, I used a little brush in one of these trays yesterday and was like making the whole point. Make sure you clean it off. About two hours later, I noticed it sitting over there and yeah, it was toast, but I fixed it. I put some vegetable glycerin on it, soaked it overnight, and it's good as new. That's my little tip for saving brushes. If you can do it, vegetable glycerin will do it. Okay, I'm not going to set this little bad boy in here. He's not even pressed in yet. See that? Okay, now this is the tip I was giving, the important tip I was giving on the alcohol. You want to get this stuff off. So it's, as you hold it, pressing it, wipe, and then turn your paper towel, or you're going to be putting glue right back on. <laughs> and some just got on my thumb, which means some just got on the top. But like I said, you're at least curbing a large amount of that, or else it would be a gummy mess. Okay, I'm pressed in there really good. Okay, yeah, I can see some glue on top. And I can get at some of that right now, but if there's any left when it's dry, you saw how I cleaned off that other one. Just like that. And you saw how I put, you know, something weighted, some kind of pressure on top, just a little bit, just to keep it down in there as it's drying. Um, but that diamond glue, or that uh, diamond glaze just dries beautifully. I'll get a close-up of this one. Mm -hmm.